Welcome to Headline Simsbury. I'm Karen Hanville. Election day is November 7th, and voting locations have changed for some streets in Simsbury. Check for your voting location on the town's website, simsbury-ct.gov. If you have further questions, you can contact the Registrar of Voters at 658-3267. The Town of Simsbury will provide residents with up-to-date information about storm preparations and emergencies when you sign up for the Town News and Announcements on their website, simsbury-ct.gov. To be notified about local emergencies and incident happenings, sign up for Simsbury's Community Alerts, which sends time-sensitive notices wherever you specify, such as your home, cell, or business phone, an email address, or hearing-impaired receiving devices. Sign up for all alerts, including the statewide CT Alert System, when signing up or updating your current profile at the Simsbury Community Alerts sign up on the town's website. The Connecticut Energy Assistance Program provides assistance with winter heating costs for Connecticut's lower income households. The town of Simsbury Social Services Department is available to take applications for this program. Size of household, income, assets, and age will determine the amount of benefits awarded. You can call the Social Services Office at 658-3283 to make an appointment or discuss eligibility. The Simsbury curbside leaf pickup schedule for 2017 is posted on the town website, simsbury-ct.gov, where you can check for your neighborhood's pickup date. The town will be making one collection per neighborhood and requests leaves be placed in biodegradable brown bags. Additional leaves can be disposed of at the Simsbury Landfill on Wednesdays and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at no cost. Simsbury High School is participating in the Stop and Shop a School Rewards fundraising program that runs through March 15th. The high school will earn cash rewards when registered families shop at any Stop and Shop store. If you already shop there, consider registering your Stop and Shop card at www.stopandshop.com, select Savings, then Rewards and Programs, and register your card with the school ID number 06684. If you supported this program last year, it is not necessary to register your card again. In memory of two Simsbury High School veterans who lost their lives to post-traumatic stress disorder, the Simsbury High School Technology and Engin Engineering Department will host its annual Freedom Penathon. Two veterans organizations, the Fisher House Foundation and Tunxis Veterans Oasis at Tunxis Community College, will receive donations from the event in memory of these alumni. Last year's event generated over $4,000. The event begins on Thursday, November 9th at 4 p.m. and ends at 2 p.m. on Friday, November 10th. It will be held in the high school's wood and manufacturing shop. Simsbury High School and Henry James Memorial High School Memorial School students, faculty, and staff have secured sponsorships to raise money for this cause and will participate in shifts throughout the night, creating pens for the military men and women stationed in foreign countries. The pens produced will then be sent to active duty military units as a token of appreciation for their service. To date, the high school and middle school together have shipped approximately 2,400 pens to units all over the world. For more information on the Freedom Penathon event or to make a donation, you can contact Kurt Dugan at the email address on the screen. The Fisher House Foundation, have you heard of it? If not, you will after watching this video. Lance Corporal, William Kyle Carpenter, and Lance Corporal Nicholas Euphrasio were on a rooftop in Helmand Province in Afghanistan in November 2010 when they were attacked by enemy fighters. A live grenade landed on the roof. Without hesitation, Carpenter threw himself between the grenade 
and his fellow Marine. Carpenter sustained massive injuries, including a skull fracture and a punctured lung. Doctors at a nearby military hospital pronounced him dead on arrival, sure he wouldn't survive. But roughly 40 surgeries and almost four years later, Carpenter visited the White House to receive the Medal of Honor, the nation's highest military honor from President Obama. While Kyle received medical treatment over the course of two and a half years at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center and the Richmond VA Medical Center's Polytrauma Rehab Center, Kyle's family stayed at a Fisher house. My main thing would just be, obviously, I needed and wanted the support and love of my parents right there with me. Because there was a lot of critical questions, you know, early on with his eye and all of his facial reconstruction and his arm. And, you know, it was it was touch and go for, on a lot of things early on. So it was critical that you had to be there. We appreciate every donor, every dollar that was given that gave us the opportunity to have somewhere to stay so we could be there with Kyle while he was recovering. Imagine a really terrible situation, which is unfortunately a reality for a lot of families, and you have an hour after you get off the phone to pack a bag and go to a place that you've probably never been before and that you probably didn't even know existed in the military healthcare world, and you're going to be there with that one little backpack and no home and nowhere to stay, and you don't know what you're going to do for the next year as they recover. I mean, just imagine what you would want, and that's what the Fisher House provides. When you're up in that situation in Bethesda, just the support from the other families, just talk about what's going on with your loved one and just the support. Somebody's there to comfort you. You're there with somebody that is in the kind of same situation that you're dealing with, and you don't feel alone. They were just like so kind and went out of their way to make us feel comfortable and at home, and that atmosphere was just so different while you are under so much emotional stress and uh, compared to a hotel. I mean, there's just no comparison. It was just invaluable, I mean, just to be able to be there for him and then have a nice, comfortable, convenient place. I can't even imagine if we would have had to have gone off the base to a hotel and then trying to get in and out of the base just to be there for a surgery at 5 a.m. or be there for a doctor's appointment. It would have been just so much harder. So for the Fisher House, that was just one less worry that we had. For us, when Kyle would be at Bethesda, you know, having a surgery, I mean, it was just so much nicer that we could stay, you know, on campus. And all we had to do was walk to the hospital because he had so many surgeries. And as you know, they want you to be at the hospital at 5 a.m. When you give that money, uh, it's going to go to house a service member and their family during a very rough time in their life. You can very much see that every dollar is being used to uh, the, the maximum capacity and that no dollar is wasted. They ask who helped us the most, who we support. That's been going on for years and we always, always tell everybody that we support the Fisher House. Hello, my name is Haley Latore and I'm a senior at Simsbury High School. I'm the president and founder of Wounded Vet Strong and we support Friends of Fisher House Connecticut. The first Fisher House in Connecticut is being built at the West Haven VA Medical Center in West Haven, Connecticut. We're inviting you to join us for a Veterans Day dinner fundraiser held at Simsbury High School on November 10th, 2017. All the proceeds for this event will be donated to Friends of Fisher House Connecticut and tickets to this event are $25 a piece. Um, this event will take place from 4.30 to 7.30, and more information about the event and how to purchase tickets will be on our website. Thank you so much and hope to see you there. The Theatre Guild of Simsbury will perform Sister Act for two weekends in November, on Friday, November 17th, and Saturdays, November 11th and 18th at 8 p.m., and Sundays, November 12th and 19th at 2 p.m. in the Simsbury High School Auditorium. For more information or to purchase tickets, go to their website, theaterguild.org. 
On November 9th, from noon to 2 p.m., there will be a soup and sandwich lunch with dessert to honor veterans at the Simsbury Library. Following the luncheon, historian John Cilio will present an engaging and enlightening multimedia presentation on America's World War II Army Air Force, focusing on the many bomber aircraft it used and people who flew them. This event is being co-sponsored by the Simsbury Public Library and the Senior Center. For more information or to register, you can contact the library at 658-7663, extension 4, or the Senior Center. Mary Dora Clark is here with this week's Senior Center update. Hi, I'm Mary Doyle Clark, and here's what's going on at the Simsbury Senior Center. The St. Mary's Church Parish Hall will come alive for a seasonal favorite on Wednesday, November 15th, with the annual Thanksgiving luncheon for local seniors. Festivities begin at noon with a meal that features traditional Thanksgiving fare, as well as beverages and dessert, served by students, faculty, and volunteers from St. Mary's School. Due to the popularity of this event, we recommend you make your reservation early through the Senior Center. Part four of our series, The 60s and Why They Matter Today, the counterculture of the 60s will take place on Wednesday, November 8th, from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. at the Simsbury Library Program Room. From the free speech movement started by Mario Salvic on the steps of Sprout Hall at UC Berkeley in 1964 through the Columbia University student riots, the Chicago Democratic National Convention protests, and the student killings at Kent State in 1970, a movement of independence and solidarity drew the Boomer generation together as it tore it apart. It was during this time that they found their voice and took their chances against the status quo or took a harder stance with it. At the center of most of this was the Vietnam War. This lecture will delve into how the culture dealt with the conflict and became the counterculture. We'll also take a look at the media's involvement in shaping opinions which have morphed into how we look at the world today. This free program is both co-sponsored by the Simsbury Public Library and the Simsbury Senior Center. You may register at either location. Join us for our next trip to Mohican Sun Casino on Monday, November 20th. The bus will depart from Simsbury at 8.30 a.m. and return approximately 5.30 p.m. Registration is $25 and includes round-trip deluxe motor coach transportation, a $15 voucher for food, and a $20 bet. Please register for this trip through the Senior Center by November 16th. The Simsbury Senior Center is located at 754 Hot Meadow Street in the Eno Memorial Hall building. Our hours are Mondays, 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., Tuesday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call us at 860-658-3273 for additional information or go to our website. Thanks for watching. See you at the Senior Center. The Hartford Symphony Orchestra kicks off the HSO Intermix series with Dark Wood on November 16th at the Hog River Brewing Company, 1429 Park Street in Hartford. This intimate, inviting, and interactive program led by HSO Music Director Carolyn Kwan features a refreshing mix of contemporary compositions and intriguing, rare classical pieces in a social setting. Enjoy cocktails, conversation, mingling, and more as the Hartford Symphony performs in ensembles. This concert also delves into the connection between music and beer. Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms were all known beer drinkers. For those 21 and over, enjoy one beer included in the ticket price. There will also be a performance of works from Mozart and Lemur by the Hartford Symphony Orchestra on Friday and Saturday, November 10th and 11th at 8 p.m. and on Sunday, November 12th at 3 p.m. 
in the Building Theater at the Bushnell. Tickets and information about both concerts can be found on their website, hartfordsymphony.org, or by calling the box office at 987-5900. Stephanie Prado is here with What's Going On at the Library. Hi, my name is Stephanie Prado, and I'm the Head of Children's Services at the Simsbury Public Library. We have some great things coming up in November that I'm excited to tell you about. First, November is Picture Book Month. During the month of November, we will celebrate with a display of our staff's favorite picture books upstairs near the circulation desk. These could be classics like The Very Hungry Caterpillar or new favorites like Mo Willems' Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus or anything in between. If you're wondering what counts as a picture book, it's any book in which the illustrations are as important as the words in telling the story. We want to hear from you too. Tell us what your favorite picture book is to be entered into a special raffle. November also brings the Thanksgiving holiday and the library will be closed on Thursday and Friday, the 23rd and 24th. The Saturday after Thanksgiving, we are open from 9.30 to 5.30 and the children's room and lower level will remain open an extra hour until 6.30 while we host some special activities for the annual event Simsbury Celebrates, which is coordinated by the Parks and Recreation Department. Simsbury Celebrates is a free community holiday celebration traditionally held the Saturday after Thanksgiving starting at 4 p.m. It has a variety of events culminating with a spectacular fireworks show on Iron Horse Boulevard. This year, the library will host Music with Miss Carey at 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. The Jewish Community Center will help us celebrate Hanukkah from 4 to 6.30, and we will have a special performance of A Christmas Carol by the Hempstead Stage starting at 445. November 25th is also Small Business Saturday. The Simsbury Public Library and the Main Street Partnership are proud to be neighborhood champions for small business. We want to support our small business owners and encourage our patrons to shop local and show love to our community. Beginning on November 1st, bring any receipt from purchases made from a local business within the month of November. Show your receipt to a library staff member to receive a special gift while supplies last and a raffle ticket. You'll be entered into a drawing to win a $25 gift card to Fitzgerald's Foods. Please make sure to write your name and phone number on the back of your ticket so we can contact you if you win. Join us as we work together to build strong families, strong businesses, and a strong community. We hope to see you at the library soon. An interfaith Thanksgiving Community Service will be held on Sunday, November 19th at 6 p.m. for all denominations. Participating congregations will include the Farmington Valley American Muslim Center, the Farmington Valley Jewish Congregation, First Church of Christ, New Life in Christ Fellowship, Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran, Simsbury United Methodist, St. Albans Episcopal, St. Mary's Church, and the Barn Presbyterian. This uplifting service will be held at the Farmington Valley Jewish Congregation located at 55 Bushy Hill Road. Please bring a dessert to share for fellowship and conversation after the service. The Second Chance Shop at 12 Station Street raises money through the sale of gently used merchandise in its store for the benefit of the Village for Families and Children in Hartford. Your purchase helps to contribute to that effort. The Second Chance Shop will hold a 50% off sale on Tuesday, November 7th and Wednesday, November 22nd. The shop is open Monday through Saturday from 9.30 to 4, and the first Thursday of each month, the shop will stay open until 7.30 p.m. for your shopping convenience. For more information or questions about donating, you can call them at 658-7152. Marianne Bannon is back to tell you about this year's Jack Bannon Memorial Turkey Trot now in its 25th year. My name is Mary Ann Bannon. Yes, I am Jack Bannon's daughter, and you guessed it, the turkey trot is just around the corner. This year marks the 25th annual Jack Bannon Memorial Turkey Trot to benefit food share. Can you really believe it? The one day event will be on Wednesday, November 15th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We hope to make our silver anniversary extra special by collecting 2,500 turkeys and $25,000 in monetary donations as a tribute to this significant milestone. 
For early risers, we will accept contributions beginning at 4.30 a.m. at Simsbury Stop and Shop, where you can personally present your donations to Scott Haney of WFSB-TV. He will be broadcasting live there until 7 a.m. This event was started by my dad in 1993 to benefit FoodShare and demonstrates the incredible difference that one person can make. After hearing on the radio that FoodShare might not reach its goal for Thanksgiving turkeys that year, he decided he might be able to help. He personally solicited donations from local area business owners and recruited family, friends, and neighbors to hold the first turkey trot. From collecting just 269 turkeys that first year, his personal dedication paid off with the turkey trot growing to encompass stores and schools in Avon, Canton, Granby, Bloomfield, and Simsbury. Our efforts continue because the need remains. Today, the Turkey Trot is the largest single day community-based collection event for food share, and we know it makes a major difference for families, not only at Thanksgiving, but throughout the year. As a prisoner of war in Germany during World War II, my father knew starvation firsthand and was determined to do whatever he could to prevent others from experiencing hunger. As a teacher, my father involved young people in the event from the very beginning through school participation by collecting non-perishables and also serving as volunteers. He wanted young people to learn the wonderful feeling of giving back to the community and helping the less fortunate. We are truly amazed by the tremendous generosity we've seen over 25 years and are extremely proud of our roots here in Simsbury. Our special gratitude to the town of Simsbury, particularly the Simsbury Police Department and Simsbury Volunteer Fire Department for encouraging and supporting this community effort since it began. I hope you'll consider making a donation this year to the Jack Bannon Memorial Turkey Trot on Wednesday, November 15th, whether it's a turkey, non-perishable items, cash, or a check made payable to food share. Please come out and see us at Fitzgerald's, Kane's Market or Stop and Shop in Simsbury, Miller Foods or Big Y in Avon, Geisler's or Stop and Shop in Granby, ShopRite of Canton, or Bloomfield Geisler's. Donations can also be dropped off at our tractor trailers behind Henry James Memorial School in Simsbury throughout the day. Please consider donating a turkey and money to honor our 25th year. On behalf of my family and our volunteers, thank you for your generosity and ongoing support as we carry on my dad's legacy. I extend my personal thanks to my dedicated committee members and volunteers, as well as our corporate donors who have made this event successful year after year. For more information or to volunteer, please call me at 860-668-5352 or Bob Gauthier at 860-658-2071. The true essence of community is defined by neighbors helping neighbors. Please join us in this effort on Wednesday, November 15th. Best wishes for a wonderful holiday season to you with your family and friends. Thank you. The Simsbury Young Professionals are sponsoring a holiday food drive on Tuesday, November 14th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at Plan B Restaurant, where they'll be collecting non-perishable food donations or money contributions for the Jack Bannon Memorial Turkey Trot. Make checks payable to Food Share. A donation of $10 is requested for the event and will include past hors d'oeuvres and an entry to win a gift certificate to a local business. To RSVP, you can email Vanessa at the email address on the screen. Kelly Westenfeld is here to tell you about the Simsbury Junior Women's Club Luminary Night. Hi, I'm Kelly Westenfeld of the Simsbury Junior Women's Club, and I'd like to invite you to shine a light on Simsbury and join your friends and neighbors for our eighth annual Luminary Night on Sunday, December 3rd from 5 to 8 p.m. During November, the Simsbury Junior Women's Club will be selling luminary kits 
so that thousands of candles can be displayed on Luminary Night in a non-denominational community celebration of the season. Friends and neighbors stroll their neighborhoods, often gathering in a neighbor's driveway or around a fire pit for hot cocoa, cookies, and social festivities. Since 2010, the Simsbury Women Juniors Club has raised over $70,000 for the benefit of Simsbury and the greater Farmington Valley community. Proceeds from Luminary Night support year-round efforts for seniors, families, children, and veterans. For a contribution of $15, you will receive a kit with supplies to make 10 luminaries. Kits may be purchased online at simsburyjuniors.org, or you can visit us at Fitzgerald's Market on Saturdays, November 25th and December 2nd from 10 to 2 p.m. Shine your light on Simsbury on Luminary Night and help the Simsbury Junior Women's Club shine our light on the community all year long. We sincerely appreciate your support. Did you know that you can promote your nonprofit event on this program for free? It's a service we offer to all nonprofit organizations to get the word out about upcoming events and programs. Call our office, go to our website for more information. SCTV is a nonprofit community access television station providing Simsbury residents a free place to share information since 1984. If you have some spare time, join our group of dedicated volunteers. To find out how to get involved, give us a call, send us an email, or come down to the station in the lower level of Eno Memorial Hall. I'm Karen Hanville, and we are SCTV, your town, your schools, your government. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.